Good afternoon, everyone. For the record, this is the Senate Judiciary and Public Safety Committee, and today's date is Tuesday, February 5th, 2019. Uh, today's uh, bill that we will be considering, actually we have two of them. Uh, yesterday we heard Senator Osmick, Senate File 75, and we laid that bill over. And today we will start with Senator Newman. Uh, and similar to yesterday's bill, the bill before us today uh, did receive an extensive hearing with general testimony in the Senate Transportation Committee, which is the Committee of Primary Jurisdiction. Uh, therefore, the bill that we have before us is a re-referral to the Judiciary Committee, and we will take testimony only on the matters specifically within the Judiciary Committee's jurisdiction. As you can see on the agenda, we do have individuals available to answer questions. Uh, the plan today is to hear and vote on Senate File 91, that's Senator Newman's bill, and then after that, we will take up Senate File 75 off the table from yesterday for a remaining discussion and final vote. As I mentioned yesterday, uh, it, it is the tradition and custom of the Senate for the public not to hold signs during committee hearings. But I also want to be sensitive to the loss of loved ones sustained by families so we will allow uh, the quiet and respectful display of pictures of those that have been lost in tragic accidents in the last few years. Uh, having said that, we'll now move on to Senator Newman's <coughs> bill, Senate File 91. Senator Newman, welcome to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members. Uh, Senate File 91 is... Uh, a bill that deals uh, with the uh, use of cell phones in making telephone calls while you were in the car. Uh, this is uh, this bill in, in various forms has been in front of this committee before, uh, and so I'm going to try and keep my uh, remarks fairly brief uh, and uh, to give you uh, ample time to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, the essence of Senate File 91 is to proactively try and get folks to put their telephones down uh, and uh, use technology that is now currently available that will allow them to make their telephone calls in a hands-free manner. Whereas uh, Senate File Number 91 uh, uh, is an attempt to be proactive in this regard, Senate File 75, the bill you heard yesterday, uh, to me addresses uh, a reactive, and I don't mean that in a negative manner, I mean that it is reactive to an incident that has occurred and addresses the penalty phase uh, of this issue. And I don't think that the two approaches to Senate File seven, uh, 91 and 75 are necessarily mutually exclusive, uh, and in fact, uh, I do believe that they can be handled uh, as separate standalone bills, and for that reason, I do and have opposed a merger of the two ideas. Um, Senate File Number 91 uh, amends two statutes: 169.011, which is the definitions portion, and uh, there we are uh, changing the definition of a wireless communication device and uh, 169.475, uh, in which currently uh, it expressly allows the use of a cell phone for the purpose of making telephone calls. Those are the two, uh, the two statutes that we would be addressing in this bill. Uh, to help you uh, follow the bill, I will tell you that from an organizational standpoint, uh, lines 1.7 through 2.11, are strictly definitions. That's 1.7 through 2.11. Lines 2.12 through 2.21 are the prohibitions, the things that are not allowed. That's 2.12 through 2.21. Lines 2.22 through 2.24 
is the penalty provision in this bill. Uh, and I would indicate to you that the penalty provision in this bill remains the same as the current law, uh, which I believe is a petty misdemeanor. Lines 2.25 through 3.4 are the exceptions to the prohibitions. And that would be lines 2.25 through 3.4, I'm sorry, 3.4, exceptions to prohibitions. Then on line uh, 3.5 and 3.6, would be the effective date uh, of the bill. I've included uh, a, a number of items that I believe are in your, um, in your packet, and uh, I would uh, be more than happy to you know, address them uh, individually should anybody have questions about any of those, but I've included them in your packet because uh, I really think that they are going to assist you in understanding uh, what this bill is all about, how important it is, and uh, primarily the information in your packet is uh, number one, statistical, and number, sh number two shows the different supporters uh, that have uh, been involved in uh, supporting Senate File 91. What is not in your packet right now is uh, a notice that I got from the uh, uh, Minnesota Fire Chiefs Association, that's an email that I got today indicating that I will be receiving a letter, a formal letter from that association indicating that they are also in support of Senate File Number 91. Uh, Mr. Chairman and, and members, I, I would indicate to you that uh, staff, you know, primarily in the Transportation Committee uh, and myself have uh, been working on this bill for a couple of years now and it has gone through many iterations and it seems like every time we make a change we affect a different portion of the bill uh, and so I just want you to to uh, recognize and understand that uh, I, I welcome all of your questions any of your input your suggestions to try and make this bill better uh, but I will indicate to you that it has not been uh, all that e of an easy journey uh, and uh, uh, I really am looking forward to uh, any help that you can offer in uh, making this uh, bill move forward. With that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, as I said, it's a very brief explanation to the, uh, to the bill itself, but I really don't think this committee uh, needs an in-depth um, explanation. I think they'd uh, much rather get on with questions. So with that, Mr. Chairman and members, I would stand for questions. Okay. Uh, we'll open it up for questions. Are there questions by the members? Senator Ralph? Senator Ralph? I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, you caught me. Uh, I'm, I was trying to catch up on something All I right. just received from uh, council, and uh, I, uh, I want to go through that first. Uh, so if there's someone else otherwise that I will have some anyone else who wishes to participate Senator Dietzik I'll just ask clarification to give Senator Ralph time if that's okay all right that's um, fine. so on page two um, and again this is just for clarification on line 228 so um, I'm, I'm assuming you read if a person has a voice activated they can compose or read an email, so it's not allowing you to to literally read an email from your phone. It's having if the phone can redo the email on the voice-activated system on line 228. Senator Newman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Dizik, could you re repeat your, your question? I'm not sure I understood. Yep, sorry. <clears throat> on 2.28, so it says on 2.27, solely in a voice activated or hands-free mode to make or participate in a phone call or initiate, compose, read, or send, or listen to an electronic message. So I know there's some phones where you can literally dictate a message. So you can do it in a hands-free where you can literally say send this text message to whatever and you can verbally give that text message. Is, is that what we're talking about? When, you, when you're talking about compose, read, on line 2.28. Senator Newman. The, 
Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Dizek, um, what we are talking about there is, is uh, the making of a uh, phone, ca phone call. Uh, you can also uh, utilize the electronic texting, and that can be done by voice activated yeah. also. Okay. So it's covering both. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion or questions? Senator Rupp. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and Senator Newman. Uh, for a point of clarification, if I understand the concept of hands-free has, I believe, a one-touch restriction. In other words, you want one touch to initiate the feature. Is that correct? Senator Newman? Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Ralph, uh, that would not be correct in Senate File 91. Uh, there is, I believe, but I'm not certain, uh, that language that is contained in uh, the House version, but it is not in this version. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Senator Ralph. Yes, I have a great concern about that because I'm thinking about the very devices that I have in my car that are supposed to assist in safe communication, and I do have to actually perform several functions. So if I want to place a phone call, uh, I have to activate the, the screen, and then I have to do something to place the phone call. Now, some phones have a, a voice command that allows you to do that. Some do not. Uh, and so I guess that's a, that's a clarification that if we are talking truly hands-free except to activate or deactivate the device, uh, it, I, I want to be clear on that. Um, it, it, so it, it would be your opinion that if, if I have to use two or three different actual motions on the screen in order to, to for example, initiate a call, that would still be okay as long as I'm not actually holding the phone in my hand to my ear and making the phone call. Senator Newman. Mr. Chairman, Sen uh, Senator Rell, um, uh, you are correct. It would be my specific legislative intent to allow the user to uh, activate and deactivate the device while you're operating your motor vehicle, and that is precisely the reason why uh, we don't have the one-touch uh, language in this bill. Uh, I have a little uh, a bit of difficulty determining whether you know what is what in touch, and and how long a period of time before your one touch expires and you can one touch again. Uh, so it's it's a phrase that I am frankly not uh, very uh, much in favor of, uh, and but it would be my specific legislative intent that you would be able to uh, activate the device in your car. And, it's, and sometimes it does take one or two or three touches uh, in order to accomplish that. Uh, so uh, I agree with your interpretation. Okay. Sir Ralph. Then turning to the GPS navigation, um, most systems that I'm familiar with, uh, at least the, the, the freestanding that are not embedded in the vehicle, cannot or, or usually have a restriction on them that, that you can't, do program or work with it while the vehicle is in motion. Some of the stuff embedded in the consoles do not have that feature, as I recall. And it seems that operating a GPS in that fashion, beyond simply being able or having a, an address and already just touching it, creates a significant distraction. Uh, I find that the center consoles are extremely distractive. In fact, to the point I find them more distractive than an, uh, than an actual cell phone because you have to take your eyes off the, off the road to view them. And in order, it's not like the old cars where you could reach over and turn a dial. You didn't have to be looking at it. You could tune it. You could change the volume. You'd reach over to hit a slide switch to change the temperature in your vehicle. With these newer systems, you actually have to focus on the system to see what it's doing and actually perform a series of activities. And I guess I'm just wondering, as you went forward with your bill, if you had looked at that issue in terms of the dis in, the, in the larger scope of distractive driving, that we would be allowing people to do something that really we're trying to prevent them from doing with the hands-free on the cell phone. Uh, do, do you understand my question, sir? Senator Newman. Mr. Chairman, Senator uh, Ralph, I, I think I do understand your question. Uh, and what you're really driving at is the exception to the GPS that is contained in Senate File 91. 
uh, and uh, you are correct uh, that uh, in certain circumstances using GPS, uh, it will involve multiple hand use uh, to activate that particular device. I can tell you that in my car, I can activate the GPS verbally by pushing a button. And if so long as I have the address available or I'm able to describe it, I can do it very, very easily and I'm not involved in uh, working with the screen like you are talking about. But I think you're also talking about perhaps GPS devices. Uh, a few years ago, they used to call them Garmin's and you know, I don't know, there were some others. Um, you now have GPI, GPS devices on your telephone. Uh, personally, I think it is every bit as dangerous and every bit as distracting to type in an address on your GPS on your phone as it would be to text or to dial a phone or look up a contact. Uh, the problem is that uh, you know, sometimes we have to garner support in order to move a bill forward. And while I uh, personally, if it was up to me, GPS would be included in the definitions of prohibited activity. But as soon as I do that, I start losing support for the bill. And so now Newman has got to be a little bit practical in trying to get the bill to go forward. And uh, whether we like it or not, that is just a fact of life. So in response to the question on GPS, I did talk to um, uh, the State Patrol uh, and specifically to Colonel Langer who is in the audience if you wish to speak to him. <coughs> and um, when we talked about this issue, uh, I'm left with the impression that if we get people to stop texting and put their phone down so that they don't make phone calls, we will have accomplished about 90% of what we have to accomplish. And there's a much smaller percentage of people who are um, activating their GPS. It's not perfect. Uh, I will welcome suggestions out to make it perfect and still retain the ability to garner the votes necessary to pass the bill. But that is the plain, hard, blunt truth of it uh, as to why you are seeing that exception to the prohibitions in the bill. Any other questions? Uh, Senator Lapps. Mr. Chairman, I would like to hear from the State Patrol with regard to enforcement ability. If there's a representative from the State Patrol, would you come to the table? Colonel Langer, would you identify yourself for the record? Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Matt Langer. I have the honor and privilege of serving as the chief of the State Patrol. All right. Thank you for being here. Senator Latz, did you have a question, or would you want uh, the colonel to make a presentation regarding this bill? <laughs> I'd like to hear whatever the colonel has to say about the bill first. All right. Time. Colonel Langer, the floor is yours. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, as I've testified uh, in the last year and maybe the year before, several times I think the committee's in both this body and the other body have heard me say on behalf of the State Patrol, we support hands-free legislation. We think it's a necessary behavioral shift for Minnesotans to make our roads safer and to start moving away from the distraction that people see every day on the road. It's the number one thing that people tell us that when the citizens talk to us about traffic safety issues, they always say, when are we going to do something about this texting while driving? Uh, we think the hands-free bill is a good step in the right direction to help join the other states that have already passed similar legislation and have seen positive results in terms of their traffic fatalities and then some other things, including traffic flow and efficiency of movement of traffic. Um, I agree with Senator Newman, and I've expressed my concern to him that we are, in essence, creating a loophole uh, by lines 2.29 and 2.30, and perhaps with the interpretation of 2.31, although the author... Uh, Senator Newman has said that that was not his intent for line 2.31. Um, I agree with Senator Newman when he said that uh, whether you're punching an address into a GPS or creating a text message, that act of distraction is equally dangerous. The GPS is no safer than the text message. So that's concern number one. 
And concern number two is the roadside discussion that occurs between law enforcement and the vehicle driver that has been stopped for texting and if that will then circulate right into, no, I wasn't texting, I was actually looking at my GPS and entering a new address, which is one of the things that we were looking forward to having uh, be eliminated, that, that clarity at roadside will be greatly improved with a hands-free bill because although many Minnesotans are very honest people when they get pulled over and admit that they were texting and shouldn't have, there's a certain segment of the population that does not admit and then they try to find a reason under the law that they can build their case against that traffic stop. So I don't know if that answers Senator Latz's um, concern or questions, but that's in concise format where we're coming from at the State Patrol. Thank you, Colonel. Any questions? Senator Dietzig. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, do you track those when you pull somebody over and they say, well, I, I wasn't texting, I was you know, using the GPS. Do you track those? Or is that something that you could track if we pass this as is and we find that it doesn't change? I'm just Hello. curious. Mr. Chair, um, Senator Dizek, no, we don't track that specifically. Specifically, there's about 9,500 citations in the state written last year for texting while driving. So to track the detailed information about um, excuses provided would be somewhat onerous given the number of violations, and that doesn't include the warnings that are on top of the citations. Any other questions? Sir Ralph. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chief Langer, um, I have a question about the t the, your, your, your recent testimony that says that one of the problems is the roadside conversation that takes place after you've pulled someone over and they say, well, I wasn't texting, I was doing something else. How does that play into the fact that a handheld cell phone that's affixed to a mount on as many people do on their dash and they could be doing the same thing. Uh, I mean, I, I think your, your enforcement issue is a, is a, is a very difficult one. I, I, the, the job that you have to do on the highway trying to enforce this is very difficult. How does this bill address that particular issue that, that someone can simply say, no, I was, I was putting music into my MP3 or I was doing something else? Colonel Mr. Langer? Chair, Senator Ralph, I think in plain language, it gets the phone out of people's hands. And that's a huge problem on our roads. And I know that this language is very difficult. Several people have wrestled with trying to get it right. That's what we're trying to do, get the phone out of your hand and drive. There are a multitude of distractions in the vehicle, and of course, we're not eliminating every potential distraction. But if you look around, this is the number one distraction, and it's people with the phone in their hand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Ingerbritson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I'm not sure who can answer this question, but in our packets is a list of uh, from the uh, N NHTSA fatality analysis reporting system. Uh, can somebody answer the questions with regards to that? Colonel Langer. Uh, Mr. Chair and Senator Ingebrigtsen, and I think I'd ask Paul Hassan from the Safety Council to maybe come forward and you know, speak to the data. I might be able to help too, depending on the direction of your question. Oh, well. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I, I look at the list and I see about 140 fatalities we're talking about here through from 2012 through 2014. And on that list, I count. <laughs> Five fatalities <coughs> while using a cellular device, cell phone. The majority of it is distraction slash inattention. Mr. How hard is this to put on a document? I mean, how many, how many of these distraction, inattention, inattentive driving things do you suspect may be cell phones? Um, and if you don't, again, I'm only seeing five fatalities with regards to phones over those amount of years. Mr. Chair, Mr. Senator Ingebrigtsen, Would you uh, Paul, identify Austin, yourself? Paul Austin, Minnesota Safety Council. Um, the information you're referring to, I don't believe is ours. I believe that is something that was provided by Mr. Collier, and he's, uh, he's testified previously on this issue. 
So I can't speak directly to that data. I can tell you that collecting data on distraction is incredibly hard, as the Colonel's already mentioned. So the, the exact causal information is difficult to get your hands on. The best data I have seen is in a little different form. It comes in the form of the fatalities reductions in the states that have adopted hands-free. And to date, 12, uh, 15 states plus uh, Georgia, now being the 16th uh, today, quite frankly, Virginia passed hands-free, so they will become the 17th. And the uh, uh, District of Columbia have all adopted hands-free. And if you look at the decrease in fatalities over time since the adoption of hands-free, the average decrease across the states, so 12, 12 of the 15 in the data I have seen showed a decrease. There were three states that showed it staying flat or going up. There are multiple reasons for that. But 12 have shown a decrease in fatalities, and the average has been 16% since their law was implemented. So that's the best data I can offer on the impact of hands-free. Sorry, Inger. Follow up, Mr. Chair. So, um, okay, hands-free is one issue. That means one would think that, okay, we've, we've cleared ourselves of this problem, this electronic problem while, while going down the road. How many of those states where you have less fatalities uh, are still dealing with texting, which I think probably everybody in this room will, will probably agree is more dangerous than putting a phone to your ear? Uh, and maybe there isn't <laughs> some that will agree with that, but when you're looking down, obviously, you're, keep, you're taking your eyes off the road. Uh, momentarily, you take your eyes off the road to, to dial the phone and put it to your ear. Yeah. So I think, it, obviously, it, factual <coughs> that it's more dangerous. Do we know if hands-free legislation is stopping texting, which is the real yeah. killer? Mr. Mr. Chair, Senator, uh, two things. Uh, the bills in the other states that, have, that are dubbed hands-free are targeting more than just phone use, more than audio phone use. It is texting use. It is Facebooking. It is logging into websites. It's using apps. It's the whole gamut. So as the Colonel said, if you don't have that phone in your hand, it's hard to be looking at real estate on a Zillow app while you're driving. That's point number one. Um, point number two is, in Georgia in particular, being the latest state that's adopted this, uh, there's been some information collected on the traffic on their cell phone systems since the implementation, particularly in Atlanta. And this is all early data. It, I can't claim it's definitive nationwide. But in their early data collection, they have seen decreased traffic in the cell systems since the implementation of hands-free. My personal suspicion is that when you look at the 16% reduction across the states, that it's better driving behavior writ large. And if hands-free is a piece of better driving behavior, wonderful, because at the end of the day, the outcome that we want are fewer crashes and fatalities, regardless of how people are driving better. Mr. Chairman. Senator Newman. Uh, perhaps uh, Colonel Langer could also address uh, Senator uh, Engelbretson's question regarding some statistics. All right. Senator Langer. Mr. Chair. Yeah. <laughs> Colonel Langer. Sorry about yeah. that. Mr. Chair. Senator Ingebrigtsen, one important point to, to note on, on this sheet, as I see it, says 2012 to 2016. The one I have in front of me has data up through 2014. It wasn't until 2016 that the state of Minnesota adopted the new MIN crash system, and the MIN crash system has far better reporting of data. So prior to 2016, it was code 13. It was used liberally for inattention and distraction. So many of these driver inattention could very well be yeah. cell phone usage. It's just that before 2016, it wasn't called specifically out on the form the way that it is today. <clears throat> Senator Ingebrigtsen. So my question would be then, do you have that data available for the committee or for myself, if I'm the only one that wants it, that new data you talk about? And of the distraction intention or inattention, um, which seems to be the majority on this list, uh, is there any comments do you know on this report with regards to alcohol or illicit drugs being used at the time? Colonel Langer. Mr. Chair, Senator, on that NHTSA sheet, I don't, I think that's looking specific to the inattention issue. I don't know if it's uh, including anything related to impairment. Anything on the crash report can be pulled and, and digested at, at 
the committee's desire or the members of the committee's desire. I can tell you that the distraction related fatalities in 2017 are about 7% and 2016 were 11% of all fatal crashes. Um, so that's data using our new min crash system that is more specific than previous data. Senator Inger, Thank you, Mr. Chair. But of that data, you don't know who was using cell phones or if it was distracted by texting. Colonel Langer. Mr. Chair and Senator, we, we could get that data parsed to that level and get it to you. Good. Thank you. Look forward to that. Thanks. Any further discussion? Senator Dietzig. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to um, ask Mr. Austin and the, the Colonel. Um, as we're, as we're going forward, if this bill moves forward, and, and also Senator Newman, is this bill going forward, are you planning on any public um, safety announcements or public campaign, promotional campaign, to just let people know what the, the laws have changed and the new laws? Mr. Chair, Mr. Senator, Austin's. I think I'll ask the Colonel to speak first to the process the department goes through when a new law comes on board, and then I can add on. Okay. Colonel Langer? And Mr. Chair, members of the committee, absolutely. The Department of Public Safety would would lead on educating the public, um, and the State Patrol would be a part of that. You know, people sometimes have the assumption that a bill like this is something law enforcement loves because then we can stop more vehicles. I kind of have the opposite impression, actually. My hope would be that we stop fewer vehicles for texting while driving because we have better compliance with the law. We've seen over 30 percent increase in the number of texting while driving citations each year over the past few years. I'd like to see that trend go the other way. So there's not an interest in surprising the public or going out and aggressively enforcing our way out of this problem. I would far, uh, I think we'd be far better off educating diligently and then of course following up with education or enforcement for those that don't heed the, the educational aspect of this bill. And, and Mr. Chair, just to add on to that, Following closely on the heels of the work that the department would do, you've got a whole fleet of, of NGOs like the Safety Council and associations like the Insurance Federation and the Trucking Association, all the folks who are on that list of supporters who, A, have already been promoting safe use of cell phones and vehicles, and B, are ready to help spread the word far and wide. The, uh, the conversation in the, in the political discourse that occurred in Georgia uh, was sufficient enough that a lot of people believed the law had been implemented immediately upon passage, and uh, when they were uh, informed that it was not actually active until the middle of the summer, they thought what, they literally told their law enforcement, oh, "What do you mean? We thought this was already a law." So I hope we can bring it to that state if we get there. Sergeant. Um, thank you. Just a quick follow-up. I would also encourage you, if you haven't already included, we do have a lot of different um, diverse communities that might have some language barriers to make sure that you reach out to those communities specifically to make sure they understand the, you know, what the new law is and isn't. So thank you. I'm going to ask uh, our uh, fiscal analyst, Mr. Turner, to weigh in on this discussion. Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, uh, Senator Dietzik, within the fiscal note itself, the DPS says they anticipate the need for a public relations campaign and have um, they've set aside approximately $350,000 in their current budget for that campaign. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Anderson. Mr. Chair, is that, uh, for Mr. Turner, is that uh, just for one year, or is that for the fiscal year, a uh, two-year, of 350000 Mr. Turner. Mr. Chairman, Senator Anderson. Um, it doesn't say. Uh, and I don't know. The colonel may be able to tell us what their public relations campaigns consist of. But the note does say that they anticipate it and they'd be willing to spend 350000 from their current budget for such a campaign. Uh, Mr. Turner, would there be any revenue generated if this bill would become law? Mr. Chairman, yes. Um, the increased citations anticipate um, 
revenue gains from the criminal traffic surcharge of 141,000 in 2020 and 187,000 in 221 and thereafter. All right. Uh, Colonel Langer, uh, did you have any further explanation of what that public campaign would be? Mr. Chair, members, I don't, Director Hansen isn't available today. I, I don't know, um, because there's not an education requirement in the bill, I don't think there's a fiscal note that came with the bill. I think that was a gesture of proactive goodwill toward educating the public as part of the education that the Office of Traffic Safety and the Department of Public Safety are always doing on traffic safety matters. All right. Any other discussion? Uh, Senator Newman, I had a question. Um, in, the, in the portion of the bill that recognizes global positioning or GPS systems that they would not apply to the prohibitions that you've outlined, uh, I'm familiar with GPS systems and one of the things that is, that, that demands your attention is when someone programs the device or loads the address into the device and oftentimes at least with my fingers uh, I hit a wrong button and I have to back up and I have to redo it again and the way I read this bill is that that process would be allowed in a moving car under your bill Mr. Chairman uh, you are correct it would be um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask um, if the loading of an address could be done in reference to page 2, lines 3 and 4, where a motor vehicle is not considered to be in motion or part of a traffic if the vehicle is legally pulled over to the side of the road and not obstructing traffic. That the use of a GPS is fine, however, the loading of an address or data into it must be done when you're legally pulled over to the side of the road and not obstructing traffic. Um, I know we're, we can't make a perfect bill, but we can try and perfect it. And that I find that the loading of an address takes a great deal of attention and focus which would take that attention off the road. If anyone wants to use a GPS, fine, but if you're going to load that device, pull over and legally park it. Uh, is that something that you would find to be objectionable to the purpose of your bill? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Chairman, let me answer the question this way. What you, what you have just described is precisely what I do when I use GPS in my vehicle. Uh, I will load the address into the system before I pull my car out of park because there is no question in my mind that trying to type in uh, an address as you have described, I sincerely believe it is as dangerous as texting. Uh, I've already offered the explanation as to why uh, the GPS provision is located in the bill in the manner that it has. Uh, if uh, council could come up with an amendment that would allow it while the car is legally parked, uh, I would not object to that because it would seem to me it would be you would be doing exactly what I do when I'm at home in my garage and I load it in before I ever get on the road. Uh, so I don't think that what you are suggesting would uh, would. Uh, uh, interfere with the bill uh, as it moves forward. Right. Uh, Colonel Langer, uh, you had made mention that sometimes the difficulty of enforcement is obscured by the driver saying, no, I wasn't texting, I was just working my GPS. Uh, the idea that I just presented, would that at least give some improvement to this bill for enforcement? Mr. Chair, uh, I think it helps get us in that direction. I think you still uh, have the loophole that you could still have the phone in your hand manipulating the GPS to reroute or 
do something other than enter the preload enter pre, the preloading of an address into the device, which gets us back full circle to where we are today, where you're driving down the road, manipulating the GPS legally. Law enforcement thinks that you're texting. You get pulled over, and the roadside discussion is, no, no, I was looking for a contact, or, which is legal today, or I was looking for it through my GPS or rerouting. And that's the discussion that we would sure like to eliminate because, as we've pointed out, it's equally dangerous to look at the phone no matter what you're looking at the phone to do. But to answer your question, it's, it, it's better, it's in a better direction than it would sit alone as the amendment today. All right. Uh, Council, uh, I gave you directions to perhaps try and make an amendment to this effect. Um, I'm not sure if you have it completed yet. Uh, Mr. Backus. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, I, I've been working on it and I can continue right. to do so. It's, it's just fairly difficult to do this because the concept of essentially the exception for the GPS is embedded into various areas of the bill, but I can, I'll come up with something and I could also speak to other people. Just it might be best to, to share it with them first, but right. we're, we're close, I think. Right. Senator Latz. Um, Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I share your concerns on that point. Um, I mean, I know you can just, you know, on my phone anyway, you can say, okay, Google, find 2341 Limmer Lane, Maple Grove, and it'll find it for me. Um, I don't know if there's a way to activate the directions button without touching it with my finger or not, but... Um, you don't have to type in an address for at least for, I think, most phones uh, or GPS systems. So um, I'd be okay. Just look, if someone wants to reroute where they're going, they can pull off at the next exit sure. or take a right into a parking lot at the next intersection and redo it. They'll say yeah. it'll, it'll cost them a minute to do that, but they'll know where they're going and they'll be safe uh, when, they, when they engage in that. Um, um, I do have a question about the penalty provisions here, if I may All right. go in that direction. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, if I'm reading this uh, correctly, current statute provides a petty misdemeanor for texting while driving. Is that right? Um, uh, or Senator Newman? Senator, Senator Newman, I guess. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Letts, yes, I believe that is correct. Okay. Senator Letts. Mr. Chairman, Senator Newman, so current statute also then on a, a second or subsequent offense provides for a penalty uh, totaling $275 for texting uh, while driving. That's current statute, right? Senator Newman? I believe that is correct, Senator Latz. Um, Senator Latz. And then under the bill that's proposed, that would not change in terms of texting while driving, but it would add other behavior while driving that is subject to both the petty misdemeanor and the mist and the uh, uh, and the minimum fine. Actually, it's a mandatory fine. It's not even a minimum fine. A mandatory fine. Is that correct, Senator I'm so Newman? I'm sorry, your voice dropped, and I didn't hear maybe, the last. Maybe I'll rephrase it. I was trying to sort it out myself, Mr. Chairman. Senator Lapp. Um So, as proposed, then um, we broaden beyond texting to some of the other prohibitions in here. Um, still a first offense is the petty misdemeanor $50 fine, which I understand is off a fine schedule, I think. Um, and then the second offense is $275. Um, oh, but that's, the 275 is current law for a repeat offense. And part of me, Senator Pappas, you're going where I'm trying to go with this, which is how does that dovetail at some point, we'll get into the conversation. How does that dovetail with increased penalties under Senator Osmick's bill, which only apply to the texting yeah. conduct, as I understand it? Um, Senator so Letts, uh, perhaps we could ask counsel uh, to try and answer that question. Um, Mr. Chair and members, yes, so, so to clarify, Mr. under cur current law, texting while driving, a first-time offense would be under the uniform fine schedule of $50 fee, pl a fine, plus the surcharge. And as you said, a second or subsequent is 225 plus the amount specified. So it's basically 275 plus the surcharge. 
So the other question is, essentially, again, how do the two bills fit together? Uh, Senator Osmick's bill, Senate File 75, only addresses texting. However, the texting uh, law and the changes made in Senator Newman's bill are all in the sub same subdivision of law. So the effect, my understanding is the effect of the, of the two bills, if they both pass separately without making any reference to each other, is that the, the other bill will increase the penalties for all of the new conduct prohibited in Senator Newman's bill. Um, Senator Pappas. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to clarify. So um, you won't have differing amounts like it is in the separate bills right now. Once they're merged, it will become one fine structure, and that would be Senator Osmick's fine structure as proposed. So that would be first fine, $150, second offense, $300, third offense, $500. And then would that apply toward the cell phone? Mr. Packus. Um, Mr. Chair and, and Senator Pappas, I, essentially it's true. I think it's a little more complicated than that because it's going to also depend on which bill passes last. Right. Uh, there is the, there is one conflict between the two bills, and that is Senator Newman leaves the current fine for a second or subsequent at essentially 275, where Senator Osmix uh, would be 300. Right. So I think, I guess in that limited sense, it would be which bill passes last. Uh, I think as the bills came into the committee, I had spoken to the revisor's office, and they felt comfortable that the two bills were not irreconcilable. Now, as the bills continue to change, that also might change. Senator Pappas. Mr. Chairman, I mean, doesn't it make sense for us to just have the same fines for both offenses? You know, ideally even merge them into one bill, because it's going to be very confusing if one passes and the other one doesn't pass, or one passes first and the other one passes second. And I think it's going to be extremely confusing. I would prefer that, you know, you merge both bills or at least have the same fine structure for both bills. <laughs> Senator Newman, could you give direction just on the fines for now? Uh, you're familiar with the fines that Senator Osmick's bill proposed, and you have a little different uh, structure on the fines. Uh, do you have an opinion on which fine should be the most appropriate? Let me answer the question this way, Mr. Chairman, Senator Pappas. I much prefer that the bills travel separately and not be merged at this point. Uh, and I say that in part because I very much want Senate File 91 to pass. And Senate File 75 puts that in jeopardy. Secondly, there's no way for us to know which, if either or both, are ultimately going to pass. So we are jumping the gun a little bit on the penalty issue. Um, so I, I really would uh, be resistant to a merger of the bills. There is a possible uh, amendment that could be brought forward if the committee so chose, uh, and that would be to uh, have Senator Osmick's bill and my bill and this is somewhat difficult because we're talking about two different bills all the time, but um, to retain the petty misdemeanor for a violation of uh, using your phone to make a phone call, not in a hands-free manner, and go with the misdemeanor in Senator Osmick's bill for a violation of texting, i.e., Senator Osmick's bill is increasing that. Uh, I have been told by Senate Council that that would be a possible resolution of this, uh, of this problem. Uh, my preference is to leave the bills alone and let them move separately as separate bills. As I've already uh, explained to the committee, I think that they are not uh, mutually exclusive and we already have an opinion from Senate Council that they are not uh, ir irreconcilable at this point. Uh, ha uh, having said that, if the committee decides that they want these uh, uh, penalties to 
uh, be addressed. Uh, uh, I don't know that we can make them conform, but we could have a different penalty for the phone call versus the text. Sir Pappas. Uh, Sorry, you think I haven't been sitting here for the last two days and two hours. Um, so Senator Newman, the controversy with Senator Osmick's bill is increasing the fines. Is that, the, is that what you're telling me? You're not being real clear, but I'm assuming that's because that's what his bill does. And, and the level of? They become misdemeanors, right? Yes. That's the controversy. Senator, I'm, so, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Pappas, that is correct. I'm and, sorry if I was unclear. No, no, and that's why it might make it more difficult to pass, because some people don't think we should increase the fines. We already, it's already illegal to text and drive. Mr. Chairman. Senator Newman. Senator Pappas, you're absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, I have had an enormous amount of <laughs> feedback from all corners on this bill. Uh, and I can tell you without reservation that, uh, yes, there is a lot of folks out there that are opposed to increasing the penalties. And in my view, it puts Senate File 91 in jeopardy if we uh, merge the bills, number one, and if we begin increasing the penalties, number two. And, Mr. Chairman, just Senator one more. Pappas. I think Senator Osmick's bill, also, you can lose your license at the third expense for 30 days. We changed it yesterday. And in your bill, you don't impact the driver's license, correct? Senator Newman. Mr. Chairman, Senator Pappas, that is correct. Okay. Any further discussion? Senator Ralph. I'm sorry, but I, I have one point of clarification that I think Council may have addressed, but I, I have an issue with the fact that the Senator Newman's bill is broader in terms of its, what it does to the use of the cell phones. Senator Osmex is limited. Do we have any sort of a, supersede, a supersession issue, I guess it would be the word, that basically if you have two statutes in the, in the books at the same time, and one of them actually overshadows, so to speak, the other bill, is that going to create a problem in terms of the, 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 what is the crime, what is the offense? I think we have to be very careful that we know what the offense is. And if we are, in one hand, saying for a certain series of offenses, we, we have these penalties, but we have a broader bill that broadens the scope of those offenses without making it clear that we are intending to separate and have the severe penalties apply only to the portion of the bill that is in Senator Osmick's bill, and that we are going to keep it, keep it a little bit uh, less in terms of the broader definition of, a, of, the, of the penalty, of the conduct we're seeking to prescribe. I, wa I want to be very clear on that. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Backus? Oh, uh, Senator Newman. If I, if I, I just want to draw our attention to what Mr. Backus originally told us, is that he has looked at this and has indicated that the two bills are not irreconcilable, and that there are statutes in place, depending on which bill would pass, first or last, that will address the issue, Mr. or Senator Ralph, that you are addressing. But perhaps Mr. Backus could, could uh, take another shot at it. Mr. Backus. Um, Mr. Chair, members, yes. Uh, Chapter 645 ad addresses a situation like this, where what, what happens when you have two separate bills separately amending, say, one provision of law and where they make no reference to each other and they're just completely separate. I mean, basically, the, the, the test is, are they irreconcilable? Now, that's a, a kind of a judgment call. And I thought as the bills came to our committee, they were not irreconcilable. And I confirmed that with the revisor's office. Now, again, the bill has, Senate File 75 has already changed. And, you know, Senate File 91 might change now, and then they may change as we keep on going. So this is a, a work in progress. Uh, but that said, I, I think the idea here, and this, it's important to talk about this because it may or may not be the intent of the committee or the legislature or Senator Newman, is what, you know, you know if, if, if that happens and the effect is to raise all the penalties, are you comfortable with that? 
one final thing is I think that it, I, I think it does give some avenue for, say, a defense attorney, you know, to challenge this down the road. Now, it's, it's a misdemeanor offense. You know, would, would it happen? I don't know, but it's something perhaps to think about. It is, a, it is essentially a criminal statute or will become a criminal statute if Senator Osmick's bill goes into effect. Sir Ralph. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, this, is, this is the very issue that I'm concerned about. I want to make sure if we pass this legislation, there are a couple of areas where I could see that, that there could be challenges to it, one of them, in fact, being constitutional in the fact that, that the, the, the uh, conduct we seek to proscribe is not clearly defined, and that, that's, that's of concern. And also the other aspect of what what actually is is intended to apply. So I, I hate to be redundant on this, but if we're going to put the kind of effort into this bill that I think we should, then I'm, I want to make sure that we're not going to create a problem that we are suddenly faced with a, a, a challenge in court that that nullifies or uh, the effect of what we're trying to accomplish. So that's why I, I I'm sorry if I'm being a little bit. Uh, redundant on this, but I want to make very clear that we need to make sure that there is no conflict that someone can, can later challenge once we get done with, I think, the good work we're trying to do here. On this point, Senator Lance? Uh, well, yeah, on, on the point as to the likelihood of a challenge, I think it's right. one question. If someone has a commercial driver's license, but they're driving a personal vehicle, um, what impact would either of these bills, if there's a conviction, have on their CDL? Uh, as if it, if it, I, I know there's federal law that ties in here also with regard to CDLs, and there's an anti-masking statute under federal law, um, which supposedly prohibits local prosecutors from making any efforts to prohibit Minnesota moving violations from going on a traffic record. Um, some prosecutors think that's unconstitutional and don't abide by that federal directive either. Um, uh, but I wonder if, if someone could tell me what the cross impact would be on a CDL holder. I'm not sure, Senator Latz, if that's in our jurisdiction or if it's in Transportation Committee. Uh, we can ask, put the question out if anyone knows that answer or any of our testifiers. I'm afraid we don't have an answer right now. Well, I, Mr. Chairman, I, I can see a, a defense attorney wouldn't even have to be particularly enterprising <laughs> defense attorney if their client gets, you know, cited for one of these violations in their personal vehicle, and as a result, they might lose their CDL and their mm -hmm. job. Uh, they're much more likely to challenge it. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, you know, void for vagueness is an issue which is always possible challenge in criminal statutes, um, and uh, you can only draw them as tightly as you can, and you do your best, and then the courts have to sort that out if they're challenged. Mr. Sir? Chairman, if I, if I Sir may, Newman. Uh, on this issue of the likelihood or uh, unlikelihood of this being challenged, uh, you know, we, we often are confronted with an issue of, gee, if we do this, it's liable to spurn or spur litigation. Uh, and for, speaking only for myself, uh, I don't legislate from the standpoint of what might happen in the judicial branch uh, and lawsuits. Um, I. Uh, I am of the opinion that we have to do the very best that we can in terms of putting our legislation together. But there's no way in the world that, that we could put together legislation that would stop litigation. It just is never going to stop. So um, uh, I, I, I do not believe that what we are doing here would be unconstitutional. I don't have an answer for Senator Latz's uh, question, except to say that texting and driving is already illegal with someone uh, who is uh, or has a CDL. Uh, do, do they have to be driving a commercial vehicle at the time? I, I would. I don't know. Uh, I feel like we're getting a little far afield uh, uh, of what we're trying to accomplish here by 
trying to guess what might happen in terms of litigation in the future. S Senator Newman, uh, you used to be on this committee, and sometimes this committee tries to seek the perf seek perfection, but it gets in the way of the good. And uh, we've had that discussion before. Um, next, next senator was Senator Anderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I'm just uh, referring to what Senator Engelbertson referenced in regards to this uh, FAR analysis that we brought up, and he mentioned that there was only uh, five fatalities that had been rec designated as uh, manipulating of cellular phone from 2012 through 2014, and uh, the Colonel mentioned something about something coming out on 16, 17 that further and I'm just wondering, uh, we also received in our packet a, some testimony from a Mr. Collier who was referenced by Mr. Uh, Osan that says, said that uh, he had testified in the past. I, I'm wondering if you're allowing th that testimony or that gentleman to speak in front of our committee. Well, uh, Senator Anderson, we, were, we had put kind of a restriction on uh, individual testifying with the exception of expert testimony from agencies and departments. Uh, due to the fact that this was a re-referral from transportation, um, personal testimony was given at that place and that was that opportunity. Um, I suppose if you have a very specific question to ask Mr. Collier, if he's in the room, we can call him forward, but uh, we would have to keep the testimony very restricted. Well, Mr. Chair, I would. I don't know, I guess I'll defer to the rest of the committee if they would like to, they've all got this in their packet uh, regarding this. Um, the concern that I had were, uh, is he mentions that this is, uh, re the Senefile 91 is to make holding a phone in your hand illegal, subjecting the offender to a $50 fine for the first offense. And if we pass that, this bill out, and then we take up Senator Osmek's bill, which makes the first offense $150. Do they just reconcile that uh, bill, or is there one, one that's going to supersede the other? Uh, and I'm just trying to come up with some kind of an idea of who, what's going to, who's on first. Uh, let's ask um, our counsel to answer that question on reconciling a bill. One passes, and then the next one passes with a different penalty. Yeah. I Mr. Backus. Mr. Chair, I, I, I'll try to answer it. Um, if, if I understand the question, it's specific to the first fine. Uh, again, I, I think the issue becomes, are they irreconcilable? I think what would happen is the reviser would take one bill and take the other bill and essentially layer them on top of each other as long as they're not irreconcilable. So I believe, my understanding is that you know, the, if the both bills pass, the fine, uh, it, uh, any of the conduct in Senator Newman's bill would become a misdemeanor, and there would be a mandatory fine of $150 for a first offense. I, I believe that's how it would work, as long as you're not considered to be irreconcilable. And I think, again, as of coming into the committee, I don't think they were irreconcilable. Senator Anderson. Well, Mr. Chair, um, I'd like to see how that happens. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm troubled by the whole, this whole trying to put, this, put these bills together to make, make it all work. Well, the question is whether we put the bills together or whether we pass them separately. That hasn't been decided by our committee. Um, Senator Ralph, did you have a comment on this? Well, I just uh, I wanted to make sure that that the object here was not to try to anticipate lawsuits, but to make sure the language was clear enough that it would make it more difficult, and that that was my purpose. And I think that that leads to the discussion that we're having now. That I think this committee's job is to make sure that we we don't uh, perfection does not should not impede progress, but we want to be as close to that as we can get without being too far off to you know spend the next two days. So I I mean I I, I certainly uh, am am in in uh, 
interested in, in uh, Council Bacchus's uh, comments, I think that we have to, at some point in time, make a decision to rely on that, that information as we go forward. So uh, I, I guess just to be clear on that, I mean, I, I think we want to, we obviously have a, an issue here that we need to deal with. Uh, we, we, and we should, we should keep our eye on that ball, I think. All right. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll direct a question to Mr. Ozen. Um, from his document here, uh, Mr. Collier's document, I found an interesting question, and I would like to hear how you feel about this. Uh, Star Tribune article, a study from, from Australia that's saying that talking on the cell phone with a hands-free device while driving is just as distracting as a conversation using a handheld phone. Do you agree or disagree with that? And my second question would be uh, the workings of it. If we were to take the cell phones away from the side of the, the head, uh, are we not going to encourage more, for a better for a better term, lap conversations, more 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 texting? I'm sure you've been asked that, Mr. Um, Chair, Mr. Austin, Senator. Absolutely. Two points. First of all, uh, hands-free is not distraction-free. That's the connection that they were making in the Star Tribune article, and that's the conflation that often occurs in this conversation. We're talking about hands-free versus hands-off, you know, hands-on versus hands-off, not is hands-off distraction-free. So there is a distraction when you're working with a phone. There's a distraction when you're working, you know, talking to a passenger. There's a distraction when you're working your cruise control. Those are all distractions. So the, are they the same? Um, when the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration in 2011-2012 went through rulemaking for commercial carriers, they made the statement that hands-free is six times safer than hands-on. Now, that's the best piece of data and information I've seen on that collection. And I can tell you that, again, in the states that have passed hands-free, where they've moved away from holding the phone, there has been a reduction in fatalities in 12 out of the 15 cases. So that's the best hard data I can give you on the impact of, of getting these things out of our hands. Anecdotally, if you look at the high profile fatalities that have occurred in this state, they have occurred when somebody has been very actively engaged with their phone. The crash on Highway 36 in Lake Elmo last March during the session where this moving truck ran into a van and killed two people, the gentleman was literally looking at real estate on his phone. If we can prevent those kinds of interactions alone, I think we'll be quite a ways ahead. Just, if I could, Senator Ingridson. Mr. Chair Limmer, just, just a comment. There isn't anybody here in this committee that wants another fatality when it comes to this technology stuff that we're dealing with here uh, that goes on while driving. And um, I certainly don't want I've taken care of my, my share of uh, horrible accidents over the years and, and that was even before the actual phones came out and there was distractive driving at that time and I think that might be what we're talking about here but in some of these cases however I, I just I'm, I'm fearful that we're going to drive them into the we're going to we're going <laughs> to I'm not convinced that having having talking on the phone is as dangerous as texting I'm afraid we're going to drive them into more texting and I, I don't want to do that I just don't want to do that away from the away from the windshield look at least at the very least we can get when you got somebody with a phone in their ear and I'm just I'm just struggling with that but. Mr. Chairman if I may Senator Newman Senator Ingebrigtsen um, I freely admit that this this bill isn't perfect uh, but you have heard from the state patrol and they have indicated to you that they believe uh, getting the hand, the, the folks put their phone down is really a good idea. You've heard from the, the safety council telling you the same thing. Now there was a fatality, a double fatality, in the southern part of the state here a couple of months ago. And specifically to the issue of whether or not the, a bill which requires people to not make a telephone call while holding the phone in your hand. 
the newspaper article that that I found on this is from uh, down near Dodge Center. A 24-year-old. I'm only going to read two sentences because I want a part of the record. A 24-year-old Dodge Center man faces charges after police say he was using his cell phone when he crashed into a stopped car, killing her 43-year-old or killing a 43-year-old woman and her eight-year-old daughter. The 43-year-old woman was stopped in traffic on Highway 14 preparing to make a left-hand turn, <coughs> and this guy comes along driving a Hummer and went right over the top of her vehicle. Court documents say that Krukenberg, that is the driver of the Hummer, told investigators he had his control Cruise control set at 60 miles an hour. That's a 55 mile an hour highway, Senator Engelbretson. Cruise control set at 60 miles an hour. While he's traveling west on Highway 14, police say he admitted he was on his cell phone speaking with a friend. And when the call was over, he looked down and manually hung up the call. Senator Engelbretson, he never saw that car in front of him. And he killed those two people. Mr. Chair, um, Senator Newman, I, I, uh, I get that. I understand that. If I can be guaranteed, if I can be guaranteed that if you take the phone away from the ear, that they're going to put that phone away totally in the car, I'm, I'm all over this. But it isn't going to happen. It Senator, just isn't going to happen. Mr. Chairman, Senator Ingebrigtsen, Senator Newman. there are no guarantees in life. That's right. And what we are trying to do is the best that we can. And I believe this is going to save lives. I think we have to do something. And the best bill I can come up with is Senate File 91. Any further discussion of Senate File 91? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. Oh, I need a motion. Sorry about that. Uh, Senator Hall moves Senate File 91 be recommended to pass and move to the Finance Committee. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, the motion prevails. Mr. Bill Chairman, members, thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Um, we'll now move on to Senate File 75, Senator Osmick's bill. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Senator Letts. Um, I, I appreciate all the work that's gone into Senator Osmick's bill, and, and I'm fine with most of it in concept. Um, my main concern is that the, the penalty provisions for first and even second offenses are a bit heavy when it, they're creating automatic misdemeanors for those levels of offense. Um, a third offense, I'm okay with it being a misdemeanor. Um, if there's a first or second offense that the enforcing officer thinks endangers safety or, is, or results in negligent operation of the vehicle, uh, they could already bring a charge of careless driving or they can check the box on the citation that says endangerment and that makes it a misdemeanor. But just the act itself on a first or second offense, I'm concerned about it being a misdemeanor level crime. Uh, so I'd be much more comfortable if a first offense were a petty misdemeanor, as under current law, um, as under Senate File 91 that we just passed, and a second offense with a higher fine, um, substantially higher fine. I mean, if, if, you're, if you are fined $275, you're going to pay $350 or more with surcharges. Um, if you're fined 300, you're going to pay 375 or more uh, with surcharge. That's a lot of money, you know, for people earning even a $15 minimum wage. You know, that's that's a lot of work to be able to pay that fine. So I think that sends a pretty strong message. Um, I would be comfortable having a, a third offense 
being a misdemeanor. Um, and then leaving in effect still the, as I say, the officers would have the opportunity to make it a misdemeanor if they thought a first or second offense was, was careless in the operation of the vehicle um, or endangerment in the operation of the vehicle. Um, and I'm comfortable if there are accidents um, connected to using the phone inappropriately. Um, and causing injury or death, you get in the CVO provisions, and I'm fine with those as proposed by Senator Osmick. So I'd like to float the idea of amending Senator Osmick's bill before we take a vote on it, um, if I may. Uh, line 1.24, um, to read that a person who violates this subdivision um, for a third or subsequent time is guilty of a misdemeanor. Um, and then the only other thing I would think about here is whether we want to make this have a, have a limited look back period on this because the way it's written right now it would be in a lifetime. So if someone gets one of these offenses every decade, the third decade offense would be a misdemeanor crime with the $500 fine. Even in DWIs, there's a 10-year look-back period if you get a second DWI, but it's more than 10 years after the first one. It's a misdemeanor unless you've got a high test. So I'd also like to float the idea of having, say, a 10-year look-back um, on this and see what the committee thinks about that. Uh, Senator Latz, uh, or uh, perhaps my question would be to counsel. Um, counsel, can you describe at least the first idea of the penalty Provisions of Senator Latz in an amendment form? We can't That's the first time you've ever said that, Senator Hall. Uh, I asked counsel if he could put Senator Latz's conceptual idea of an amendment on penalties in a more formal oral form. Counsel? Uh, Mr. Chair, you were talking about his first concept. I think you could say line 1.24 after subdivision insert a third or subsequent time. That doesn't address the, the look back period, but that, that's the, that would be the first issue Senator Latz mentioned. Senator Latz, is that satisfactory? It is for, for that, for that element of it, yes. That element. Uh, is there, are you, you'd like to put that in the form of an amendment, oral so amendment more. as described by counsel? Yes. All right. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm having trouble. I didn't hear what uh, uh, Mr. Backus, his language. Uh, I take it we're doing this in steps. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Backus, could you repeat the uh, amendment, the oral amendment of Senator Latz? Um, Mr. Chair, members, uh, page one, line 24, after subdivision, insert a third or subsequent time. Everyone understand the amendment? So we're not changing. Uh, so we're we're not eliminating uh, uh, one point one nine. It says is the guilty of a misdemeanor. Are we going to strike that out then? Because uh, right now the way the section is drafted, it's an automatic misdemeanor. And as I understand, uh, Senator Latz is he wants to make the first two offenses a petty misdemeanor. So we would have to strike that language, I would think, that, that makes it a misdemeanor in line 1.19. Senator Latz? 1.19? Um, right. Mr. Mr. Chair and Senator Mr. Ralph, are you, are you working off the CE1 engrossment? I'm sorry. I'm working off the computer, and I guess the new one hasn't been in, engrossed. My, my mistake. Everyone has it in their files. Mm -hmm. Council, does the uh, oral amendment, does it make reference to uh, referring to the other two previous uh, violations as a petty misdemeanor? Uh, Mr. Chair and members, no, it, it doesn't address that, but my, I believe that there's a provision in 169 that basically makes an, anything a petty unless otherwise specified. So I believe this would be the otherwise specifying for the third or, spe, uh, or subsequent time. 
All right. Uh, Senator Ingerbritz. So, Mr. Chair, uh, I don't recall the whole discussion yesterday. So we took the misdemeanor out of the first two violations then? Yesterday? No? no. They're still in here. Okay. Senator Hall. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Did mm. did we adjust for a look back, or haven't we gotten that yet? We're going to do that next. We'll take one step at a time. Um, does everyone understand the amendment? Uh, I had a question for Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner, uh, how would this would this solve part of our fiscal note uh, issue? if we adopted Senator Latz's amendment? Mr. Chairman, members, this would address um, most of what the public defender had problems with. Um, by, take, by making uh, the first two offenses a, a misdemeanor, you expand the uh, number you bring of the offenses microphone by, down. You expand the number of offenses by many thousands if you make the first two offenses a misdemeanor. By keeping them petties and making the third a misdemeanor, um, much of what the public defender said uh, I had concerns with goes away. Now, what I'll be doing is requesting a new fiscal note between now and finance, and I think that's what we'll see in the new fiscal note. All right. Is there any further discussion about the LATS oral amendment? Senator Anderson? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, so if we, if we leave it the way it is, what's, what, what will be the uh, uh, financial effect of that, leaving it as misdemeanor? Uh, Mr. Turner. Mr. Chairman, Senator Anderson, that's what we talked about yesterday. The, the public defender said that it, creating 5,300 new misdemeanors a year um, would result in them needing approximately 13 attorneys. Um, and by keeping it petty, the, at least the first two offenses, um, that pretty much addresses what we what we talked about yesterday. Um, the third, it it wipes out virtually all of those um, 5,300 estimated new new offenses that the public defender is figuring on having to represent in the fiscal note. Senator Anderson. So, to me, the way it is without the amendment. It's a higher penalty, but hopefully it will have a bigger impact and cause less texting or less use of, of cell phone if we leave it the way it is without putting, a, putting an amendment on there. Even though it's going to cost something in the first go-around, sometimes you've got to pay the cost in order to get the benefit. Any further discussion on the LATS oral amendment? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, chairs in doubt. Uh, all those in favor, raise their hands. All those opposed? Two, three, four. Uh, the motion does not prevail. Um, Moving on to the next amendment, Senator Latz, on the 10 year look back. Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd ask Council what the best way to do this is. Um, we might have to do this uh, in several different uh, locations, but I, I would propose a 10 year look back period uh, when you get to subsequent offenses. All right. uh, so I think that would apply. In subdivision two, probably uh, paragraphs B and C. Mr. Backus, uh, do you have any suggestions on language for a 10 year window? We're putting Mr. Backus through his paces today. Mr. Chair, members, I'm sorry, I had, I had language for the, the misdemeanor provision in paragraph D. I, I think I might need a few minutes if you want to extend it to the, the mandatory fines and everything else. Well, Mr. Chairman, since they're all misdemeanors now, I think placing it there won't be enough.
Does there, while council is working on this, is there any other concerns with the bill or any other discussion, Senator Dietzik? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yesterday I brought up the question of the definition of hands-free setting that is located um, several places throughout the bill. So I think the first one is on um, line 4.17. It's again on 5.19. The bill that we just passed, Senate File 91, has a definition. So I don't, I don't know if we need to um, literally put in a new definition, but in the definition in Senate File 91, it's voice activated or hands-free mode. So could we just, wherever it says hands-free setting in the new language in the bill, change it to, and I, I'm assuming this works, voice activated or hands-free mode. And then also above that, they're not consistent when they um, say, starting on line 4.16, cellular phone or other electronic device the Newman bill uses a wireless communication device, which then means a cellular phone or portable electronic device. So those are just kind of consistency yeah. discussion. Uh, does everyone understand Senator Dietzik's oral amendment? Uh, Senator Ralph. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a little difficulty hearing. Are you saying we would simply adopt the language in uh, Senator Newman's bill under uh, on line 2.5 uh, through 2.7, or are you just going to use the word voice activated or hands free without going any further? I think we've got a perfect opportunity to m at least get some mirror on the bills. If that's your intention, then that, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Chair. Senator Dietzik. Um, thank you, yes, Senator Ralph. That was my intention, was to at least make sure even if they're moving separately, that the language is consistent mm -hmm. so that we could adopt and, and use the definition in Senate File 91 from 2.5 to 2.7, mm -hmm. add that into Senate mm -hmm. File 75, and then change wherever it says in the new language, hands-free setting, clarify it, and, and literally change it to voice-activated or hands-free mode for consistency sake. Uh, we're beginning to uh, overwhelm our council right <laughs> now. There, there's very difficult. It's very difficult to uh, work this on the fly. Yeah. Uh, we do have the room uh, throughout the afternoon. Until throughout the afternoon and even into the evening. But uh, I would suggest we we uh, move to recess so we can give council some time to catch up, at least on the amendments that are before us now. Mm -hmm. And then we can uh, come back. Senator Pappas? Uh, Mr. Chairman, you don't want to just finish up tomorrow. I mean, we're meeting tomorrow. I don't think, once council's had the work, I don't think it'll take us that long. Well, we do have a full agenda for tomorrow, Senator Pappas. Mm -hmm. We have two bills? How many? Four. Hmm. Four bills. <laughs> That's another issue is the roads. How much time do you think we need? Ten? How much? Uh, we're going to stand in recess for 20 minutes. Senator Latz, did you have a comment? Well, I, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to suggest while Ken is working on that, we might consider the, the, if if the committee is interested in the 10-year look-back period, we might want to consider that same provision um, for uh, Senator Newman's bill as well, which has a second or subsequent time with the increased fine without any limitations on look-back. I don't know if it makes as much sense in that one because the, the fine doesn't escalate once you get beyond it. It stays right. the same. Uh, Senator Lance, fine is different than in I, I understand what you'd like Newman. to do. Um, in reference to Senator Newman's bill, I would like to ask him to come back here, and we would need some time to actually do that anyway. So I think we'll stand in recess for 20 minutes for now, and then we'll regroup.
We are back at, as the Senate Judiciary and Public Safety Committee. Uh, the first order of our business, we, or let me back up. We were considering Senate File 75. We are formally going to lay over Senate, Senate File 75 and reconsider Senate File 91. So we are now laid over on Senate File 75. Senator Ralph, would you make a motion? I'm sorry, are we bringing the... Senator, Senator Ralph moves to reconsider Senate Re File 91. 91, yes. And we will need a vote on that. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion prevails. Senate File 91 is before us, and so is Senator Newman. Uh, Senator Newman, um, been a lot of discussion back and forth regarding your bill and Senator Osmick's bill, which gives us uh, a need to back up a little bit and uh, consider certain elements of your bill. I understand there's a A14 amendment that you as author would like us to consider. Uh, could you explain uh, the A14 amendment? Yes, I'll, uh, I'll do my best, Mr. Chairman. And, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the patience of the committee uh, and in trying to work through these things. Uh, the A14 amendment is an amendment to Senate File 91. And if you remember yesterday, there was discussion <laughs> that occurred, uh, I think it was primarily from Senator Desick regarding the, uh, the definition of, of uh, hands-free. And as I understand it, there isn't a definition in Senate File 75, but there is a definition in Senate File 91. What the A14 amendment will do is, uh, assuming the committee I think also would have to add the amendment to Senate File 75 would have the effect of providing an identical definition of hands-free in both bills. All right. Uh, right now we're going to consider it, applying it just to your bill and we'll get to Senator Osmick's bill in a few more, well, let's hopefully in a few more minutes. Um, uh, right now we have the A14 amendment before us. Is there, we need someone to make a motion. Senator Ralph moves the A14 amendment. Uh, before we go any further, there's an oral amendment that council is suggesting. Mr. Chair, members, it's it's not my suggestion. It's it's a conversation that Senator Newman had with Senator Latz. It it would add to the A14, incorporate into it one more change to Senate File 91, and that would be uh, page two, line 24, delete 275, and insert 300. The effect of the oral amendment would be to change the current fine for a second or subsequent violation of the either texting or the, the cell phone use while driving law. It would raise that by $25, and Senator Newman and Senator uh, Latz have agreed to that. All right. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Newman. Uh, uh, Mr. Backus is, is correct, Senator Latz, and I did have that conversation, and I have agreed to the change. It's my understanding that uh, by going to $300 from 275, it remains a petty misdemeanor in my bill. And I just wanted to make sure that that was on the record. It is my understanding uh, that uh, the penalty in my bill would still be uh, a petty misdemeanor. Uh, and I do agree to that change. All right. Uh, Senator Latz moves the amendment to the A14 amendment as described by counsel. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, the amendment, oral amendment prevails. Now we have the A14 as amended before us. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the A14 say aye. aye. Opposed? The amendment is adopted. Uh, let's see. Where else do we go? Oh, um, Council has suggested some cleanup amendments as well. No? Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I would like the committee to consider this idea uh, to give council the authority to, to clean up any stray language in this bill. I don't know why everyone's snickering, but uh, 
Mr. Chairman, I'm not. <laughs> Senator Hall moves the the uh, authority to give counsel um, the opportunity to clean up language uh, after this bill, if passed. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That, uh, that direction is approved. I'm off script. I don't know the words. Okay. Uh, now we have the entire bill as amended before us. Senator Latz, or, or might as well, Senator Latz, uh, moves Senate File 91 as amended, be recommended, pass, and move to the Finance Committee. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Uh, the motion is adopted. Mr. Thank you. Chairman, members, thank you very much. Senator Newman. Um, we now will take Senate File 75 off the table, and it is now before us. Now, uh, Council does have three amendments for technical improvements to the language. Um, Mr. Backus, would you describe, um, let's say, the A4 amendment for now? And we'll need to have it passed out. We can have staff pass it out. Uh, Mr. Backus. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, uh, just to clarify, this is not a technical amendment. Uh, this is an amendment that's drafted. It does a few different things. First off, it addresses uh, Senator Dietzik's issue with the hands, essentially defining hands-free mode and deleting the reference, the original reference to hands-free setting. The new definition is essentially, it's added two places. It's added to the CBO law, and it's also added to Senator Osmick's underlying bill. Uh, and the amendment, the, the language is now basically essentially the same as what we just did for Senator Newman's bill. Uh, also on lines 1.20 to 1.24, it basically uh, deletes the rulemaking authority for the bill and thus the bill would not have to go to state government. All right. Everyone understand the amendment? Is there further discussion on the A4 amendment? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. I'm sorry, I need a motion. Senator Hall moves the A4 amendment. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, uh, the amendment is adopted. Council, next amendment. We'll need it handed out. Mr. Backus. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, this, this amendment really hasn't actually been discussed in committee, but what it would do is it would change the criminal vehicular operation provisions in Senator Osmick's bill to instead of referring to use of a cellular phone or other electronic device, it would replace that with reference to a wireless communications device. That would make it a little more consistent with what we use in current law including both underlying bills. So it, it, it's probably not necessary substantively, but I think it, it makes, I think it makes everything work a little bit better to use consistent terminology. And it does define a, via, a reference to current law, the, the traffic code. Uh, Senator Hall moves the A5 amendment. Is there further discussion on the A5? Hearing none. Oh. I'm Hall. sorry. Could Mr. Backus explain again in plain language <laughs> what's happening I'm sorry I want to make sure I understood this mr. Backus mr. chairman members up uh, Senator Osmick's bill amends the criminal vehicular operation law to provide uh, to, to criminalize accidents where people get injured and the person the driver is negligent and is using a cellular phone or other electronic device uh, 
this amendment replaces that language with language, basically this replaces cellular phone or other electronic device with wireless communication device, which is something more consistent with what we're using in current law and these two bills, and it is defined. Any further discussion? Senator Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in re relationship, it says here, uh, 1.4 on the uh, amendment that Section 5, Minnesota Statutes 2018, Section 609.2111 is amended to read. And yet, when I look in the bill here on uh, line 18, uh, oh, I'm, look, I'm sorry, I was looking at, looking at 19. Sorry. All Thank right. you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, the amendment is adopted. Mr. Backus, we'll need help handing out the amendment. I believe that's the A8 amendment. M Mr. Chair, members, this Mr. amendment Backus. relates to the oral amendment we made to Senate File 75 yesterday regarding eligibility for limited license. Uh, what it, it, it's basically technical. What it does is it amends the actual um, limited license provision to put reference to this. So it's, it's just essentially a, a more effective way of doing what we did yesterday. Senator Hall moves the A8 amendment. Is there further discussion on the A8 amendment? Here... Senator Lapps. Uh, Mr. Backus, I'm just looking at, um, at uh, line three of the A8 amendment. I just want to make sure I understand what you're doing there, deleting without the waiting period provision. Um, Mr. Backus. Mr. Chair, members, um, in consultation with Transportation Council, uh, we don't need to say without any waiting period. Uh, the effect of the A8 amendment would allow the person to get the limited license without a waiting period. We just don't need to say it uh, where we did. Thank you. Any further discussion on the A8? Senator Ingerbritz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So would, would this take away the discretion of the, of the judiciary on this particular thing, or wouldn't it? Mm, or does it say that you mandatorily can go ahead and get a work permit? I know the, the object is to get one, but I'm saying is it take away the discretion? No? Um, Ms. Mr. Mr. Chair and Senator Inger, I, I don't believe so. The, the, the amended bill would still require the 30-day suspension, and it would say the commissioner may issue the limited license. So technically that is discretionary, but that's the same as it was yesterday anyway. Any further discussion on the A8 amendment? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, the amendment is adopted. Uh, are there any other amendments? Uh, Mr. Backus? Um, Mr. Chair, members, this is an oral amendment. Uh, Senator Latz had suggested the concept earlier. What it would do, as, as, now, as it now would appear, would uh, amend the... Um, well, let me just read it to you, and then I can explain it. Uh, it's back to the CE1 document, page 1, line 21. Um, delete a third or subsequent time and insert within 10 years of the first of two or more violations of paragraph A. Uh, this would then make the mandatory $500 fine and the adding the offense to the, to the payable... Uh, adding the fence to the mandatory appearance, in other words, not having it on a payables list, that would apply only if it occurs, it's the third within 10 years. Uh, Senator Latz, I believe this was your oral amendment that you wanted to move on. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. All right. Does everyone understand the amendment? Uh, Senator Ralph? Uh, so let me, again, I'm, I'm a little foggy here. Uh, so basically, any, all of the provisions in terms of penalties, including the, the suspension and the, fire, the, the misdemeanor, would all be in that, included in that 10-year ten, ten basket? No. Okay, that's why I'm asking Senator the question. Lapps. 
Did you? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if we had made that change in paragraph D on line 24, then all of them would be subject to the 10-year look back. But this change is only amending um, uh, line uh, paragraph C, uh, which is the uh, a third or subsequent offense. Um, so to get to the level of a third or subsequent offense, um, that is the 10-year look back period provision. Paragraphs one and two would still be, well, paragraph two would be in a lifetime. Um, there's another amendment to follow, okay. I believe, mm -hmm. um, that we'll be talking about, um, again, dealing with the uh, question of misdemeanor versus petty misdemeanor, which will okay. put this all together. Mm -hmm. So Maybe we should we want to include uh, that now. Well, uh, I don't know. Why don't we just keep them separate for okay. now? Senator Ralph. So basically what we're saying is, is that it's a 10-year look back for the penalties the changes it to a misdemeanor but retains the penalties for the license and the uh and the class uh would be would also the the, the uh, one hour driving instruction or are we going to just yes. continue with the, se the the second offense on the instruction so Senator mr Labs. chairman um <clears throat> after this is done i will offer or we will attempt to bring back i think um, my earlier proposal to only have Paragraph C, the third offense in 10 years, be a misdemeanor. Um, would make one and two first and second offenses petty misdemeanors. But we haven't gotten quite to that point yet. Um, but this will apply the look back only for a third. When you get to the point of a third or subsequent offense, it has to be within 10 years. And that's the point at which you get a suspension. Right. So, okay. That, I just want to make sure that we're not m m tinkering with that portion of the of the penalties. That basically, it's just it, it has to be third offense within ten years, and that obviously is a rolling. Okay. okay. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any further discussion on Senator Latz's oral amendment? Senator Anderson. Could Mr. Back could Mr. Backus reread that oral amendment? Mr. Backus. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, um, line 1.21, uh, delete a third or subsequent time and insert within 10 years of the first of two or more violations of paragraph A. Everyone understand the amendment? Any further discussion? Uh, Senator Latz moved the oral amendment. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The amendment is adopted. Uh, we now have, are we done with amendments? No, we have to reconsideration motion. Uh, Senator Ralph moves to reconsider the previous Latz oral amendment regarding the third or subsequent misdemeanor, as well as changing the criminal sanction to two um, petty mis I'm going to have counsel explain this. <laughs> Um, Mr. Chair, members, I, I believe it's to reconsider the motion whereby Senator Latz moved on line 1.24 after subdivision, insert a third or subsequent time. That uh, motion failed earlier, and if you reconsidered, and he would offer that again. So it's just the reconsideration of the previous Latz oral amendment. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion is now reconsidered. Uh, Senator Latz uh, moves the previous language that council just described. I hope Mr. that's Mr. That's Chairman, correct that's correct. The, the effect of which would be for the first or second offense in a lifetime um, would be petty misdemeanors with the escalating fines as already described. A third offense within a 10-year period would be the only one that is a misdemeanor, and that has that higher fine of $500 in there. It does not make any changes to uh, the uh, driver safety course, which would still be required on a second offense in a lifetime, um, and will take at least half a day, maybe a whole day out of 
person's life and cost them probably several hundred dollars to pay for the safety course. And it does not make any changes to the fact that a third offense within the 10 year period would be um, a uh, suspension of the driver's license for 30 days. So the only difference is the level of offense that goes on their record, a petty misdemeanor versus a criminal conviction of a misdemeanor. We've also had um, Senator Osmick, uh, we asked Senator Osmick about this provision and he is, he is uh, approving of this amendment. Is there any other further discussion on this amendment? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The amendment is adopted. Now we're done with them. Yeah. Now we need to give the authority to Mr. Backus um, permission to clean up any language as necessary uh, pursuing the original intent of our conversation. Uh, we'll need to have a vote on that. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, the direction for council to further clean up nece necessary language is approved. Well, hold on, Mr. Chairman. Senator Letts. Um, I was distractedly not driving, but consulting with council. I was trying to get it done fast, Senator Letts. <laughs> trying to get it past you. Well, but um, he, he, he wanted to clarify something which is accurate, and I had misspoken with regard to uh, when the Drive, distracted driving course is required. Um, apparently under the current language of the bill, it's only required on the third offense within a 10 year period. Um, so first offense, $150 fine, second offense, $300 fine, both petty misdemeanors, third offense, $500 fine, distracted driving course, and 30 day license suspension. Within 10 years. Is yeah. the way it ended up. Within 10 years. Huh? Within 10 years. Within 10 years. All right. Sarah Anderson. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Backus, is there not in our, the driver's manual now a, a section regarding distracted driving? Mr. Backus. Mr. Chair and members, I, I'm not positive since it's more of a transportation issue, but I do believe that the driver's manual does address distracted driving, and the bill does as well. I mean, the, the bill does in terms of requiring that. Thank you. Sir Ralph. Just in, in earlier discussions, I had thought we had uh, possibly considered changing the, the, the distractive driving to the second offense. I mean, I'm perfectly happy with it either place. I just, I just want to make, make sure that that's what we finally, we have it on the third offense. That's what we really intended. That's, that's, I'm just clarifying that. Um, Senator Ralph, uh, we did have that conversation. Uh, I asked uh, the author, uh, why is the distracted driving course all the way to the third offense or third conviction, it seems like it's a little putting a, the cart in front of the horse in, in a way. Shouldn't we be reminding this driver on the second offense that they should, that they should, that's when the course should take place uh, in order to possibly have them avoid a third offense? Uh, I would be open for an amendment if you so yeah. desire. Uh, Mr. Chair, since that was my original proposal uh, in, the, in, the, in the amendment that brought in the, the, the driver's license, uh, that was someone else, but the, the, mine, that was my addition. Uh, I, I agree. I think that maybe we should move it up one because that, that kind of says let's, let's tell them that they're doing stuff wrong, and then if they continue to do it, then we, then we say, okay, you know, you, 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 got, you got the lesson, but you did, it didn't take, so now we're going to put a little sting to it. So I would certainly uh, uh, feel that that would be okay. Senator Ralph, um, I've been instructed that we may have to have another recess to park this thing into the bill. Um, I don't think in light of the weather it would be anything that anyone would welcome unless we gave permission specific to council to draft an amendment and insert it in the bill. Um, I don't know. That's getting a little. I, I don't really like to do that too much. Senator Latz. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Pappas just pointed out to me as well that the uh, right now, if you got a license suspension, the Department of Public Safety can verify that the course was taken before reinstating. But on the second offense, you have the fine and nothing more. So it'd be harder 
to put a verification process in place, I think, to make sure they actually completed the course. So it might be easier to leave it where it is, and if there's an easier way to figure it out later, maybe yeah. it gets done further down the road. Uh, this bill, if passed today, would be going to finance. So there may be some time to, uh, to uh, further amend, uh, but it gets out of our jurisdiction a little bit at that time. Yeah. Things happen around here. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's stop. Uh, is there any further discussion on the bill? Senator Latz, any uh, further discussion on the bill? Uh, hearing none. Oh, Senator Hall moves. Senate file. Senator Hall moves Senate file 75 as amended be recommended to pass and move to the Finance Committee. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? The motion prevails. There's no further business before this committee. We stand adjourned. <laughs>